Who would be Prime Minister? It's not worth the hassle. I couldn't run a bath, let alone a country. No, it's not for me. I don't care for popularity or power or money. Anyway, like, subscribe and comment. I have to become a great, rich, powerful YouTuber and my ego is being crushed by my sub-100 stats. See? I can flip-flop in a single sentence. I shouldn't just be Prime Minister. <laughs> no way. I should be Emperor. Unlimited power. Oh, S Star Wars is next week, isn't it? Never mind. So, yes, we have an election of the general kind. Again, it's a major event, this. We only get this chance uh, to vote on how our country is run once every five years. Oh, wait. How many elections are we going to have? Um, we are, though, a country divided currently. If you hear someone say all politicians are the same, they're not really paying attention, are they? But surely they have to. Social media has gone from a place to look at people's dinners, disappointing little house parties and cats, to a heated, uh, hate-filled war zone of vitriol. Will this election be won by policies? Not in this footballised version of events. It'll be won by spin. Folk like Seamus Milne for Labour or Dominic Cummings for the Conservatives are more important, really, in this election than Johnson or Corbyn. It's not a new thing either. Spin has always been around. The BBC even had a satirical sitcom based on spin and procedure and things like that of a political nature in the 1980s and it was called Yes Minister and it went on to have a sequel called Yes Prime Minister which obviously meant that uh, series protagonist Jim Hacker did pretty no, well. Don't tell me about the press. I know exactly who reads the papers. The Daily Mirror is read by people who think they run the country. The Guardian is read by people who think they ought to run the country. <laughs> the Times is read by the people who actually do run the country. <laughs> Daily Mail is read by the wives of the people who run the country. <laughs> the Financial Times is read by people who own the country. <laughs> the Morning Star is read by people who think the country ought to be run by another country. <laughs> the Daily Telegraph is read by people who think it is. <laughs> it's never revealed whether Hacker is a, a Labour or Tory Prime Minister. Uh, what he constantly tries to do is formulate or enact or affect departmental and widespread policy changes, but he is usually opposed by the British Civil Service, principally his permanent secretary, Sir Humphrey Appleby. The guy who's in the middle of the two of them is a guy called Bernard Woolley, who is uh, the principal private secretary. All the while, Hacker has to convince the public that everything is running ever so smoothly, and he is given advice by the pair about that. Yes, Prime Minister ran from 1980 to 1988. It was voted the sixth best sitcom in a 2004 poll and was the favourite show of one Margaret Thatcher. In 1987, would-be megalomaniacs could have Maggie's job. Do you fancy running the country for a week? What would you do? I'd fill every UK house with kittens and Labrador puppies to cheer people up. Uh, which I'm sure you'd agree would work until people with pet hair allergies, hatred of certain pets and uh, people that didn't want to clean up poo or feed these pets or pay their vet's fields chirped up. So maybe I'm getting a bit sidetracked here, but I think the idea is that you don't make me a prime minister. We just have like the skeletons of Labrador puppies in the street and no one wants that. Hang on a minute, I'm supposed to be reviewing a game, aren't I? Yeah, sorry about that. Yes, Prime Minister was released by Mosaic Publishing, a little-known software house that put out an incredibly diverse array of games based on different properties. They released games based on books such as Terry Jones's Eric the Viking and uh, the Adrian Mole series, but also one based on the radio drama staple, The Archers. I didn't know about that until now. Yes, Prime Minister, though, was a Prime Minister simulator, which is a rare genre indeed. How would such a thing play? Well, according to this game, quite linearly. 
Um, but surely it has to be to match the concept of the show. Jim Hacker is a busy man. In the game, he has uh, his early morning consists of being besieged by phone calls, telex messages, ask your grandpa about them, um, about road safety, and uh, pre-planned meetings about other things that have cropped up uh, for the cabinet in the previous days. Uh, you're juggling with jurisdiction here, mishandling memos, and it's very difficult to keep up with it all. But then nothing happens for a bit too. It feels like a, a regular office job, with its weird runs of high pressure followed by nout. I would imagine this is something Prime Ministers do feel. It's not a text adventure as such, despite the amount of text being displayed here, as it's streamlined into a multiple choice icon driven interface. And it works pretty well. Uh, your mission is to survive a week as Prime Minister. If your approval rating drops too much, you're in a bit of a pickle. Don't you look a bit tired? Um, it's presented fairly well, though really there aren't a lot of actual graphics to go around. The number 10 office is a colourful place and there are some low-res images of the actors from the show. And... Those previously mentioned great swathes of text are what you'll be staring at for the majority of the game. Luckily for Yes Prime Minister, it's in the text that the quality of the game shines through. The script of the game is a fine representation of that of the TV show. The answers you respond with, be it about wind turbines or putting a positive spin on an errant drunk cabinet minister punching the leader of the opposition in the face in the Westminster bar are reflective of those of the show and its characterizations. They could have been taken from the scripts of the uh, TV show and placed into this spectrum tape. In terms of Yes Prime Minister being representative of the TV show it's based on, it's the best game based on a TV show that's come out on the spectrum. As simple as that. And it was such a high, difficult concept to do, to carry off, and they did it. However, in terms of it being actually a good game, it's okay. Uh, but it also has the longevity of a burger. Once you've done it, you've done it. It was uh, fairly well received by the press too. Sinclair user declared it a successful and expensive attempt at an impossible idea and gave it an 8 out of 10. Your Sinclair whipped out a blooming Mega Game Award, slapped it on the box there and gave it a 9 out of 10. Look at them go. Crash though. Well, they weren't so excited and uh, they stated that while it was an interesting idea and there's some entertaining text, there's not much variety or interaction and gave it a lowly 56%. Ouch. I'm sort of with them, but that does seem a little bit harsh. What a busy December 2019 has, eh? Or has had, if you're watching this on Corbyn's free Wi-Fi stroke from the comfort of your insurance paid for hospital bed. Delete where appropriate. We've got Christmas as ever and all the associated misery, stroke, joy, delete where appropriate that goes along with that. We've also got the last episode of the Star Wars Skywalker saga, just like uh, we had in 1983 and 2005. Maybe we'll get another one in 10 years. Along with an absolutely fantastic stroke, awful uh, delete where appropriate Star Wars TV show at the same time. If you're American or a dodgy pirate, yarg. Expect videos based on all those things. Star Wars and Christmas. Ooh, room for a retro treat. I don't even convince myself that I sound excited anymore. Okay, thanks. Uh, bye.